What's up YouTube? So today I want to make a video that's kind of like a what's in your camera bag video updated for going into 2020. So you might remember from like the very start of this YouTube channel at the beginning of the year, I made this video about what's in my camera bag and I had a separate camera for taking stills, a separate camera for taking video and sets of lenses for both of those respective cameras. And I even carried around a film camera almost every day plus a GoPro and everything has completely changed since then. I realized over the past couple of months making more and more YouTube videos that having all of that equipment, even though it was all really great equipment and helped me get the job done, it felt like things were kind of getting in my way. Like having several different sets of batteries to charge and just too many things to think about, it kind of got in my way more than it helped me out. So today I'm gonna go through my updated, more minimalistic camera gear setup for my everyday photo and video making. Before we jump into the video, make sure you go down below, give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out a ton and I appreciate it big time. So let's jump right into it. First things first, we gotta talk about the actual bag that I use. And this is one of the only things that hasn't changed. The bag that I use is this right here, the Peak Design Everyday Backpack 30 liter. I made a full review of this thing a couple weeks back, so I'll link that up in the corner. Whether it's here or here, I don't know, but I'll link it up there so that you can check that out if you're interested in learning more about this bag. Huge fan of this bag. I've talked about it a number of times in my videos, so I'm not really gonna go through it again today, but it's definitely an awesome bag. It holds everything that I need, plus more if I wanna throw more gear into it. Definitely recommend it. Check out the review I made of it a couple weeks ago. Now the first thing that goes inside of the bag is obviously gonna be the camera. And it's actually the camera I'm shooting on right now. Like I said, it downsized all my kit, so now, I'm having to shoot on this camera, so I can't show it to you right now, but I'll show you some B-roll of it just so you can see what I'm using. It's the Canon EOS R, and I've had this thing for like three weeks now. So I switched from Sony over to this camera kind of because my brand over the past year or so has become as the guy who has familiarity and experience with just about every camera brand. I've never used the Canon RF system before, mostly because it's relatively new, and I really wanted to get hands-on with it to get some experience so that I can talk to it in my videos. I don't like to be ignorant to any of the camera brands out there and talk crap about something that I haven't used, so I switched over to the Canon EOS R to test it out for the next couple of months, see what my opinions are on it, and so I can give you guys some solid full reviews. I don't have enough information about this camera right now to give you a full review, but so far, the first three weeks of using it, big fan of it. And that's the first thing that goes into this bag. The lens that is glued to my EOS R 99% of the time is, again, what I'm shooting on right now. It's the Canon RF 15-35 to f2.8 image stabilized L lens. That's a long name, but it's an awesome, awesome lens. Canon really knocked it out of the park with this lens. Canon's made a number of super wide angle lenses like the 16 to 35 2.8s in the past, but this is actually slightly wider than those lenses with a 15 millimeter angle of view at the very wide end, and it has image stabilization. I've been using this every single day for the past three weeks. I'm a huge fan of it, and that is the lens that is almost glued to my camera 99.9% .9 of the time. And then the last thing that's out of the frame, so I can't show you it because I'm filming with it right now, is my Rode Video Micro. It's a super inexpensive mic. I think it's like 50 bucks. It's one of the cheapest mics that Rode makes. It doesn't require any external battery power or anything like that. And as you can hear right now, it sounds pretty good. It's not perfect, but I certainly think it gets the job done for the videos that I make, and I'm a big fan of it. I've never had to charge the batteries. It's been really durable. It's gone through hell. It's been dropped. It's been bumped on things, it's never broken, and so I'm definitely a big fan of the Rode Video Micro. Next thing up, and the first thing that I can actually show you because I'm not shooting with it right now, is the Canon RF 50mm f1.2. So what I just described to you that I'm shooting with right now is the video gear that I use 99% of the time for shooting my videos. Now when I wanna switch over to taking photos, like I've talked about a number of times in the past, 50 millimeters is my absolute favorite focal length for taking photos. And so I got this Canon RF 50 millimeter F1.2 to test out alongside the Canon EOS R, and I love this lens. Last week, I think it was last week, I made kind of a first impressions video on this lens. Huge fan of it so far. I definitely recommend checking out that video because I have a ton of image samples in that video if you're curious to learn more about this lens. Huge fan of this lens. And this is the only lens that I have besides that 15 to 35 F2.8. So I 
see that this is a very minimalistic camera setup because I only have actually two lenses. I have a 15 to 35 millimeter lens for those ultra wide angles and for shooting videos like this. And then I have this 50 millimeter for all my stills. And this is actually the most zoomed in lens that I have right now. And honestly, I've been using it for the past three weeks and I haven't had any sort of issues. I've never really been one for shooting a ton of telephoto stuff. So having 50 millimeters at the long end is plenty enough for me. In terms of what I use to support my camera, 99% of the time it's this right here. It's the Mi Photo Backpacker Tripod. I think it's called. I'll link it down below so I can get the exact one. But I really like this one because it's really, really small, as you can see, but it can all rotate around and extend relatively far so that you can have a pretty tall tripod. And the absolute best thing about it, let me see if I can show you right here, is that it fits perfectly into this backpack. So I can open it up right here and then horizontally right in the top of it, this tripod fits in perfectly. And so it perfectly balances the bag at its center of gravity, which some tripods, when you have a massive one, you're gonna have to strap it to the side of the bag, which causes the center of gravity of the bag to be tilting to one side, so it's heavier on one shoulder than the other. With this one, it doesn't do that, and that is my absolute favorite thing about that tripod, the fact that it fits horizontally perfectly in this camera bag. I'm just realizing that this is gonna be a pretty short video today because I'm already on the last thing that I carry around in my camera bag on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's this Peak Design accessory carrying pouch. And as you can see, it matches the colors of, of the backpack that I have. But what I carry around in this is pretty much just the stuff that supports the gear that I use on a daily basis. Like the charging peripherals for my EOS R, the cables associated with it and things of that nature. I use SD, or I have an SD card case in here. And uh, let me see what else I got. And then, oh yeah, obviously just spare batteries for the Canon EOS R. Pretty simple. I don't like using any of the pockets inside of my Peak Design backpack because there's like pockets on the side and stuff. I don't use any of that because I like to be able to easily pull stuff in and out of the bag to transfer it between whatever bag I might be using on a daily basis, which I actually use this almost 100% of the time, so I don't have another bag, so I don't even know why I said that. But <laughs> but I, I like to use this because it gives me the ability to easily pull in and out anything that I have in my bag, and it fits everything I need in a really, really nice form factor. And again, it just slides in right into the top of my bag alongside that tripod that I showed you a minute ago. So that right there, what I just showed you is my core photo and video kit. One camera, two lenses, a microphone, a tripod, and then the accessories that go along with it. Super, super basic, but honestly, it gets the job done for almost everything that I need to do. You've probably seen in my videos in the past that periodically I do use a gimbal, periodically I do use a drone, but that's on a very much case-by-case -case basis. I pretty rarely use those things, and so that's why I call this my like minimalist filmmaking and photography kit, because this is what I use 99.9% .9 of the time. And then every once in a while, depending on the project, maybe I'll pull out a GoPro if I'm somewhere where I'm close to water and I'm concerned about my camera getting wet. Maybe I'll pull out the drone if there's a project where I need to get drone shots or something like that. And then very, very rarely I use a gimbal. I do love using gimbals, but I think they're kind of overused oftentimes. And so I try to avoid using them unless I really, really need to. This, like I said, is what I use 99.9% .9 of the time and what's always inside of that Peak Design everyday backpack. Anyways, guys, thank you a ton for watching the video. As always, I had a couple requests for like an update on what camera gear I've been using recently. So here it is. This is what I've been using every single day. Thank you again for watching the video and I'll catch you in my video next week. Peace.